This video will discuss the energy levels of individual atoms and molecules. So in statistical mechanics thus far, we've discussed uh, how to calculate the probabilities of various energy levels, how to compute the partition function, Boltzmann factor, average energy for various systems. But we haven't mentioned yet is what are the actual energy levels for atoms and molecules, which we want to compute for this type of playlist on chemical thermodynamics. So the molecular energy is actually going to be partitioned into various parts. So depending on the molecule's size and shape, there are going to be different kinds of values for how many of, uh, for what those energy levels are. But let's look at some of the general trends and characteristics. So first of all, for all atoms and molecules, you're going to have translational energy. For all atoms and molecules, they exist in three-dimensional Cartesian space so they can displace their position in X, in Y, and in Z, all mutually orthogonal directions. So there are going to be three translations. So the energy of translation of displacing the molecule through space is going to be the energy it has in the X dimension plus the energy in the Y plus the energy in the Z dimension. All right, additional, additionally to translations, if you are a molecule, you can rotate. So diatomic or linear molecules have two rotations, and nonlinear polyatomic molecules have three rotations. So if you have a molecule here, you could rotate around the x-axis, rotate around the y-axis, or rotate around the z-axis. Uh, for a linear molecule, if it's aligned along the z-axis, rotating around the z doesn't displace any atoms, so that actually isn't a rotation. So that's why you have two rotations for linear molecules and three for nonlinear molecules. So the energy of rotation is going to be the energy of rotating around the X plus energy of rotating around Y plus energy of rotating around Z if there is any energy to be had by rotating in those dimensions. All right, so those are rotations. Additionally, if you are a molecule, you can vibrate. So for nonlinear molecules, if you have N atoms, there will be three N minus six distinct ways the molecule can vibrate. So those, will be called, those are what would be called normal modes, which is this kind of set of QI that I have here. Q is a, each a, a distinct way that the molecule can vibrate. Uh, this is all discussed in the, in the quantum mechanics playlist, some more details about how that occurs. All right, so here's where that missing rotation goes, is that linear molecules have an extra vibration relative to nonlinear ones. So for nonlinear molecules, you have 3n minus 6 vibrations. For linears, you have 3n minus 5. So the energy of vibration is a sum over all of the vibrational modes of the molecule of the energy of each of those individual vibrational modes. All right, and then lastly, we have the electronic energy of the atom or molecule. So for each atom and molecule, it has a nucleus, maybe multiple nuclei, and it has however many electrons it has. And given a specific number of nuclei with their charges and where they are, and a given number of electrons, that results in distinct electronic states. So in quantum mechanics, they solve the Schrodinger equation, and it gives you distinct electronic energy levels. So for the hydrogen atom, that looks like a diagram like this, where you have your 1s orbital down here, 2s and 2ps up here, 3s, 3d, 3 P up here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's all determined by the Schrodinger equation and by quantum mechanics. We're not interested in the details of that in this playlist. That's all in the quantum playlist. What we're interested in here is what is the result? What are those energy levels? So the total energy then is the sum of all of these contributions. It's the sum of the translations, displacement through space, rotations, spinning around the axes, vibrations, uh, displacing within. Uh, the molecule, and the electronic energy, the energy relative to uh, the molecule being dissociated into atoms or the atom being dissociated into a nucleus and electrons. So those are the energy levels of atoms and molecules. The, it's the focus of the quantum mechanics playlist, uh, what the actual details of these energy levels and where they come from are. We're just going to be taking the results of what these energy levels are and then doing statistical mechanics on top of that. So for molecules, we can get a partition function for a molecule, which will be the sum over all of the states 
of the Boltzmann factor of those states. So e to the minus total energy of that state divided by Boltzmann constant times temperature. So what we need to do is find what the set of the total energies are for all the states of these individual molecules so that we can get partition functions, which will be the focus of the next few videos.